Peace to the gods and the goddesses, man. I'll do a quick little video. <coughs> Damn, son, it's freezing out here. Got my tea on deck. What's going down? What's going down? If somebody asked me about life. <laughs> Spoke about life before, man. But they mentioned it in regards to other planets. Yes, there's life on all planets. I'm going to break it down. Soulfully, or should I say, I'm gonna break it up? The hell with breaking it down. I'm gonna break it up soulfully so you can see all the parts in the earth. Now, I mean, I'm gonna break up all the parts, put it in the earth so you can see what it looked like from all dimensions. Now, you know how scientists be talking about. There's no life out there in space. There's no life on all these other planets. These planets, or in regards to the moon, they'd be like, well, the moon can't support life. There's no life on the moon, blah, blah, blah. That's BS. You see, you gotta know that when they say certain words, it's sort of like when you go into the courtroom, they use words that appear to have the meaning that you have been programmed to identify it under, but they speak in a whole different language called legalese. So they might say, do you understand? A word like, do you understand in a courtroom? And you would take it as if that word or the way how they using it means that, do you comprehend what I'm saying? You know, understand. And you'd be like, yeah, I understand. But you don't know that that word understand means that you're standing under that person's authority. Meaning that you're giving them jurisdiction. So you got to know those same rules apply. It might not be, the words might not be used in the same context. But those same rules apply in regards to the words that they use. Have a dualistic or even a... Even a, uh, let's just say it could have multiple meanings, multiple definitions, and that the definition could be um, identified in regards to how it's being used. That's why you gotta understand this dimension, man, because they're hitting you from all different spectrums of light. So when they say that well, there's no life on the moon and the moon can't support life, you automatically see when, when they say that word life, you automatically run the simulation in your head of how they programmed you to see life. Immediately. You know what I mean? But you don't actually understand what life really is. You know what I mean? Life is energy. Break it down, so I'm, I'm gonna go in a little deeper because I spoke about this, but I'm gonna break it down a little deeper so people can have a. Uh, matter of fact, you need to break it down a little deeper. I'm gonna break it up a little higher. The hell with breaking things. I'm off that wagon, breaking things down. The hell, we we all the way we all the way down in the damn abyss right now. We so down in our energy vibration that we can't even recall what the hell happened five minutes ago. I'm going to break it up even higher so the God race can see, you know, comprehend. Life is energy. Energy, man. When they're telling you there's no life on the moon, <clears throat> people take it as if there's no people on the moon and, you know, animal and plant life and all this other stuff. They look at that as life. But you gotta know, when you're looking at animals and you're looking at plant life, the way how they programmed you to see life, you're not necessarily looking at life in its totality. You're looking at a purpose that life is serving. 
In other words, life would be the energy and the purpose of the energy in regards to a plant would be to do what type of, based upon whatever type of plant that it is, based upon how the molecular structure is set up of the plant, is meant to serve a specific purpose. So now the life, energy, the purpose is being served. You gotta know the, the energy is infused in bodies and based upon how those bodies are designed. That is the purpose being served by the energy. The energy is serving out a specific purpose based upon what type of apparatus it is infused in. So when they telling you there's no life on the moon, we automatically assume well there ain't no people on the moon, no uh, sharks, birds. Because you know they trained you to see everything from an earthbound frequency. That you always got to use earth as a reference point to identify anything. Locking you in the matrix. You know what I mean? The hell with using earth as a reference. We need to be using the overseers as a freaking reference because they are the only ones who always existed. We need to use, that's why I always say that we need to be using God as a template. If you don't see things, you don't comprehend how gods see things, then you ain't seeing at all. You in the land of the blind. So when they telling you that there's no life on the moon, that's BS. There is life on the moon because life is energy. Energy serving a purpose. Serving a purpose. Now when they would tell you that, well, you know, the moon can't support life. They were like, well, the, the moon can't support life. So, you know, we got to blah, 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 do the, all these experiments and all that. When they telling you that the moon can't support life, they basically telling you, let me translate. Let me break it up and throw it in the earth. They're basically telling you that the moon cannot support their biological purpose. It cannot support their biological purpose because their vehicles, their bodies were tailor-made. It was mapped around how earth energy vibrates. Meaning that if you take a fish out of freaking water, it will not be able to function. Why? Because the fish body was specifically grafted to live in a aquatic environment. Same thing with the humans. This is like an aquatic environment that the humans is living in because air is a less dense of water. Air is less dense. It's a less dense substance of water. When air becomes highly Dense, it turns into water. First, they tell you whether it's humidity or it's hot outside, and humidity is high. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of moisture in the air, they would tell you. That's because the air is becoming more dense, more dense, more dense. You're looking at energy shape shift into matter when you see air turn into water, and you're looking at the reverse effects when you got a pot of boiling hot water on the stove and the water turns into steam, aka air which is really energy. So when they're telling you that the moon can't support life, they're basically telling you that the moon can't support their biological purpose. You know what I mean? Straight up, look at it like, you know, I, I gave the example. You have a blender, you have a refrigerator, and you have a TV. What do all of those bodies have in common? They all use the same energy, electricity, a spirit, all of them. Now in order to get the energy, life, to serve a specific purpose, uh, watching images and hearing audio, you need to create a vehicle, a body known as a television, so that when the life, the energy, is going through that apparatus, it now serves the purpose of projected images and audio so people can have the experience of watching TV. Now if you want to blend something up, you ain't going to use the TV. You have to create a whole new vehicle 
that can serve the purpose of blending. You know what I'm saying? And the same thing with the uh, refrigerator. You want your refrigerator to keep things cool, food fresh, beverages cold and things like that. Get you some ice cubes. You need to create another vehicle now. But all of those vehicles, they all using the same energy source. Electricity, a spirit. So the energy would be life, but the life is being defined by how it's being utilized and the, the life or the energy is being utilized based upon the body that the energy exists in. For instance, the blender, the TV, the refrigerator. That's the purpose that the life is serving. Now the life or the energy is serving a specific purpose based upon the design it has been infused in. So there is life on the moon because there's hella energy on the moon. Hella energy is on the moon. Hell of energy is on all these fake planets because you got to know planet is just a general term. A moon is a planet. It's an electric planet. A sun is an ether planet. A real planet. You got fake planets, real planets. Don't think that the beast is the first one to do anything fake. No. The gods are. You know what I mean? They're the ones who are the first ones to create fake people. Fake trees. Fake plants. Fake everything. You know what I mean? Straight up. They're the first ones to do everything. The beast just mimics. He just runs the program that the gods programmed in their uh, um, DNA. DNA, man. DNA is like liquid microchips. The cells is like liquid microchips, man. All the cells that's in the DNA is like a liquid microchip. Look at it like a microchip on a liquid biological level, son. The same way how they put programs and codes and tasks, computational processing, um, calculations and microchips. Well, the guards do that on a higher light vibration level. Because when these computer programmers is programming microchips, they are doing that by way of energy. Because it's electricity, it's codes, energy. Electricity code, they code the electricity to behave a certain way. It's energy that's going into the microchips. Ultra low energy. Electricity. They doing it with the keyboards and things like that. That when they hitting the certain keyboards, they triggering certain impulses. You look at it and see it as letters on a keyboard. That's not letters. That is just something that they put on the keyboard so you can have an idea of what you are doing. But realistically, those are different tones of vibrations. When they hitting the keys on A, B, or however they doing the commands, command, semicolon, uppercase, all this, all that is different vibrations that they hitting on the keyboard. An advanced, or should I say a modernized Ouija board. That's what your keyboards is. Your computer keyboards is a modernized Ouija board. Look at the Ouija board. It has the letters of the alphabet all on it. It has the numbers and it has the compass and the, 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 uh, the uh, triangular compass with the eye in the middle. Well, look at your keyboard. It has all the letters on it, all the numbers on it, and the mouse is now the triangle compass with the eye in the middle. That's why when you move the cursor on the screen, you see the triangle. <laughs> it's showing you, man. These things evolved. They know that the Ouija board is a gateway to communicate with spiritual energy, electricity. Well, you're doing it every time you're on your computer, every time you're on your cell phone. So when you see these computer programmers hitting all these keys on a, on a keyboard, because you know keys is notes. Keys is different tones. They give off different sounds, different vibrations. So you hitting the keys on the keyboard, meaning that you hitting different codes, different vibrations. So you are talking to the microchip. 
That's how you open up another dimension of communication. When you are now talking to the microchip and you are telling the microchip what to do. That's what the program codes is. That's why the computer behaves the way it does. Because you told the computer or the microchips to carry out specific tasks and the computer does so. But the gods does that on a different level. Your liquid microchips, your DNA, the gods tell your cells what to do by way of sunlight. The same way how they use lunar light, electricity, the humans to talk to mother, to uh, computer processes, computer, the, the microchips. The same way how they do it, the gods do it on an advanced level, a way advanced level. They do it from across space. They don't need to set up no wires. Like the beasts need to set up wires and run the energy through wires. No, the gods just send it through sunlight. When you're looking at the different spectrums of light, like they tell you it was a rainbow, the red, the green, the blue, and all those colors, look at that as individual thick wires. Look at that as individual thick wires. When you're looking at the, the yellow, the green, the blue, the red, look at that as different wires because they even set up the computers like that. Look inside of a computer sometimes if you ever get the chance or in any of these electronic devices and you will see that they have a whole bunch of wires uh, like bunched up together. But you can see, you can see that it's actually individual strands that they clump together and you can see green, uh, red, yellow, blue, orange. You can see all these different color wires. Where you think they get that from, man? The sun. Communications, man. Communications being done on a highly advanced level. That's not no, there's no such thing as sunlight, man. As I stated before in past videos, man. That is telepathic communication that's happening. But you just don't understand. You think, you think we was praising the damn sun when we had our hands up in the air. No. We was receiving communications, man. Look at the fingertips of your freaking fingers, man. That is a sonic wave band you're looking at. That's not no fingerprint. That's communications. That is communications, man. There ain't no fingerprint. There ain't no such thing as a fingerprint. The Matrix always dumb everything down so they can make everybody so damn docile, man. So you can never understand how intellectually inclined the gods are. You think God is some puppy in some freaking corner. <laughs> oh, I love you. Love me. Please love me back. Man, the hell out of here with that, man. Emotions is a simulation. It is not real. It is a program that your body has the ability to run. You, however, being the soul. The master programmer, you have the ability to suspend programs. You can suspend emotions. How you, how you suspend emotions? Stop feeling. Stop allowing your emotions to take over, man. Why do you think people say things like stop allowing your emotions to run you? Pay attention, man. Pay attention to the words that's being said. Stop allowing your emotions to run you. What runs? Program runs. Stop allowing the program of emotions to run you. You run the program. You suspend it with a thought. Uh, I already know they're going to try to trigger me. Yeah, you got it, fam. I'm out. Yeah, you good. You good. I'm out. Be good. Yeah, no doubt. Take it. That's it. Keep it moving, son. Because <laughs> you understand. Now when you understand like how the gods understand what emotions is, it would never rule you. See, people who don't understand what emotions is, they are victim to emotions. But when you understand that it's just a simulation, it's a program that you have the ability to run and you also have the ability to suspend it, once you understand what it is, it won't affect you. You will be able to move through this uh, dimension emotional-less. You will be like a DualShock 3 PlayStation controller. No emotions. Motionless. So you know the DualShock 4, Oh, hold on, was it a dual shock three or a dual shock? Man, who gives a damn, son? That's not important. What's important is once you understand how the emotions is, it won't affect you. Man, it's just a program. People are coming up under so many different programs right now, son. 
programming you, telling you there's no life on the moon. So once you understand what it is, it won't affect you. See, the gods already know that emotions is a simulation. They the one who installed it in the helix, in the more, in the more advanced uh, animal race, the more advanced computers, biology. Liquid cells in your freaking, uh, or should I say liquid microchips in your damn DNA. You know what I mean? So they telling you there's no life on, on the moon, or moon can't support life, meaning they can't support the type of purpose that they serving on Earth, because they use Earth, they program everybody to use Earth as a, a, a foundation of reality. But everything that's happening on Earth, or should I say damn near everything that's happening on Earth is a freaking illusion, son. Earth is hell. As I stated before, hell is not a place where you burn forever. Hell is a place where illusions exist. How many freaking illusions is on this dimension, man? Once you start digging deep, they told you the rabbit hole is deep. <laughs> the rabbit hole is deep. The rabbi. Their holes is deep, man. When you start going into their doctrines, you fall. You fall. When you start digging into their joint, you fall. You be like, whoa, it's like a, like an endless pit. You fall, you just walk around the corner, then you be like, whoa. You just keep falling, falling like, damn, son, look at all, are you serious? Because now you start connecting the dots and you begin to start seeing how quote unquote deep it is. In other words, the deep has to do with how far they buried it. And the depths have to do with how many different layers you have to go through. Because you're seeing how far they buried it, man. And then you understand why they buried it so far. Because you realize, yo, man, this is all a freaking lie. It's a big lie. Everything that they say is a freaking lie, man. You, this, this is the dream, like I stated before. If you're having a dream and you see a bird fly, flying upside down, sideways, spinning around like a propeller, and you in your dream, you look at that and you be like, yo, hold on for a second, man. That ain't right. What the hell is that? Then you be like, oh, swag, I'm dreaming because you're using Earth as a reference point because you'd be like, yo, I don't see nothing like that on Earth, so I, something got to be wrong, or I got to be dreaming because this is happening. But you see, you got, we the God race should be using the sun as a reference in regards to this dimension. When, you, we on, when we on this dimension and we see same sex, fake food, you know, oranges mimicking oranges, you know what I'm saying, fake people, when we looking at the fur head wearers, you know what I mean? That should let, look, the, the, the freaking fur head wearers, man. When we're looking at the fur head wearers, that should trigger and say, hold up for a second, man. What kind of freaking dimension is this we in, man? This ain't right. But because you don't have the memory of when you was on the etheric or in the etheric realms, the sun, the real planet, because you ain't got the energy to access that kind of memory, you take it as, well, you know, that's just how it is on Earth. No, that's just not how it is. That's the illusion. Showing you that is an illusion. Dogs have more rights than people. What is this? What is this? You shoot a dog down, they damn near give you life. You shoot a so-called black man down, you get a freaking plaque. You get an honor of achievement award, son. You don't see what's going on, man? Madness. But shit. So you know they sent all the drones and all that stuff on the moon. Because what? They study in the energy. They study in the energy because they want to grasp a vehicle that they could infuse their spirit in to be on the moon. And that's going to be a robot, man. As I stated before, man, it's going to be more um, robots, metallic robots. Let me be specific. It's going to be more metallic robots on the moon than it is biological life. Hold on for a second. Yeah. To drop off this con. So you're the purpose, man. He's talking about the moon. When they talk about there's no life on the moon or no life out there in space, period. They lie. We should know this. That's a subconscious program to keep you locked in Earth. 
You know what I mean? So I stated that, you know, the human genome project, uh, the human genome project would be the new genesis. That's your new genesis. As I stated before, these things, they don't necessarily die, they evolve. And evolution is an external manipulation, meaning that you have hands that's manipulating the genetics on different levels. So when you're looking at the Human Genome Project, you're looking at, gen you're looking at Genesis Evolve or the evolution of Genesis. Hold on for a second. That's the new Genesis. The Human Genome Project, which has, which has to do with getting all these various tissue samples with your cells. You got to know that when you're looking at tissue, you're looking at millions of cells that is co-joined. So they're getting all these different tissue or cell samples and they're running all these experiments and you got to know that experiments is tests. Switch the word experiments with tests. They're running all these tests and the test is comprised of them matching up specific cells with specific uh, cells. In other words, they are building a quote unquote helix when they run in tests. The same way how these engineers, when they making inventions, they get a prototype. Look at the prototype as cells that's being tested. They get all these different parts, ideas, they build it and they put it together and they test it and see how it works. Or oh, this doesn't work with that, let's scrap that, let's rebuild it on this level and do this. You know what I'm saying? The prototype. So when you're looking at all them tissue sample cells that they're doing, that's prototypes that they're doing. Prototypes that they're building. They're building a prototype which has to do with them comprising different cells, just like how these, they do on, on a, a machine level, like when they're building a car, they get all these parts, they run tests, they get parts that's faulty, and parts that's good. The faulty parts that don't rock, yo, we need to replace this structure, we need to rebuild this frame, this whole interface, it needs to be revamped on this section, and they rebuild, and then when they get it right, they say, okay, now we got the prototype, you run the test, the test is, uh, the test is um, proficient, we're satisfied with the results, you know, now let's duplicate it. Let's duplicate it now. Now we got the prototype up and running, it's good, it's stable, we got it where we want it to be. Some of the tests exceeded our expectations when we was running these experiments. Now let's duplicate it. The same thing with the damn human species, man. That's what they're doing right now. Genesis Evolve, human genome. Making a new vehicle. You know what I'm saying? They launch a lot of tests. Subjects out into the wild, meaning out in this world. They got a lot of test subjects running out, out here, man. And when I say tough, uh, tough, when I say test subjects, I don't necessarily mean biology, man. A lot of these machines that you see out here are test subjects. Test subjects, man. Some of these machines that define these people's daily lives, are test subjects, man. Test subjects. A bunch of experiments is being ran. A majority of the people's life is experiment. I done spoke about this in past videos. Like I be picking up these people that be going to dialysis. I done broke it down that when you're looking at the dialysis machines, those are prototype kidney machines. In other words, you see how they made the fake heart, the pacemaker? Pretty soon they're gonna come out with a fake kidney. These kidney machines that they have up in these dialysis centers, those are the prototype versions. Because you know the prototypes always come out big. They always make it big, then they minimize it. They're gonna be coming out with fake kidneys pretty soon. 
They already got the fake heart. They, 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 they got the fake lungs. You know, they just call it oxygen tanks. That is a fake lung. Notice that the oxygen tank looked like what? A battery. Telling you what it is. Somebody had asked me what a dam is. A dam is a spiritual battery. I spoke about that in past videos, man. It's a spiritual battery. When you're looking at all these dams that they have out here and you see all the water in it, don't look at it as you're looking at water because it's energy that you're looking at. You're looking at energy that has been dramatically materialized on a specific dimension that makes it, makes it what they call liquid. But you're really looking at a liquid crystal. When you're looking at water, you're looking at a liquid crystal. Because if you freeze water, what it turns into, what they tell you is ice, but it's really a crystal. So when you're looking at water, you're looking at liquid crystal. You're looking at liquefied energy. So when you're looking at these dams, notice that the same materials that they use to make the dams is the same materials that's inside of the batteries. Same materials, man. It might differ a little bit, but it's basically the same materials, man. Because when you're looking at the dams, you're looking at a spiritual battery. But you test subjects, man. Running all these, all these tests. So when you're looking at the human genome project, that is the new genesis. That is the new genesis. They changed the names, but the foundation remains the same. I stated before, Genesis, when you're looking at Genesis, a lot of those indications that they have in the book of Genesis are logs. That's like what you put down in your journal when you have your findings. They was describing specific experiments, but you know they switch things up so people can't catch on. You're looking at logs, findings, and, and results, and test subjects that was jotted down. So they give you the time, that's why you look at the chapters, it's time frames. The chapters is time frame, frames and times of the experiment. Not a coincidence the same way how they jot down the journal and assign certain um, time frames in the journal is synonymous with the Bible, how they set up the chapters in, in, in the damn Bible. Chapter 1 verse 12. You know what I mean? Come on. So yeah, experiments. They get the cells and they run in the experiments. Why? Because they are attempting to build a new vehicle. You know, this is not something that the masses is going to be able to grasp because a lot of the stuff go way over their heads like airplanes. Some of them don't even know that is there. This is not meant for them to grasp. This is only meant for the God race to realize. You got to know that waking up has nothing to do with the human species, as I stated before. When you hear people talking about the people is unconscious and they need to wake up, that ain't for the human species. The only ones who need to wake up is the God race. That's it. Because it would only make sense that the rulers are the only ones who are supposed to wake up. The only ones who will go to sleep is the rulers for the experiment, the species, the human species, not a race. There's no way a species could be a race. As I stated before, it's like saying you have a race of butterflies or a race of tadpoles. Doesn't make any damn sense. But the only ones who's supposed to wake up is the God race. The only ones who's unconscious is the God race. The so-called black people. They are the only ones who will be receiving the message to be awoke. The message to, to, to be awoke ain't going to Chang Chang. You know what I mean? It ain't going to Chang. Chang is here to be running his Dawa kitchen. That's his purpose. That's his purpose. His purpose ain't to do nothing else but cook that fried rice and that wok. That's it. You going up in there trying to wake Chang up? He gonna look at you with the error look face, man. You gonna have the glitch error look on his face. Can't compute, can't compute. 
Why? Why? Why you say? Why you say? Can't compute. Can't compute. The message is only for the God race. Only for the God race. That's it. You need to realize you fell. But yeah. So when you see the human genome, they are attempting to build a new vehicle. When you see them doing cellular experiments and with, with these tissue samples and all that, that's how they build in the helix. Because your helix is comprised of different cellular codes, cellular vibrations, cells. So they are attempting to rebuild a new vehicle because they know that the vehicle that they have now is running its course. And it's only a matter of time before they cannot reproduce. That's what birth declines are. When they talk telling you about birth rate is declining and such and such birth rate is at an all time low, they telling you that the reproductive gene is being exhausted and is coming upon the threshold of being discontinued. You have girls, matter of fact, I had I, I used to uh, know this girl that um that used to tell me that she can't get no orgasms. She was like she never had an orgasm. And I even met certain girls that told me that they can't have babies can't have babies son they say they will go to the doctor and the doctor would be like some of them would tell me that the doctor say that they could have a baby but with the guys that they've been with they can't have it like the, the, the seed doesn't catch or it's some girls out there that don't have it's like they cannot reproduce they cannot reproduce now you got to know that this that vehicle that body that that soul is in or that spirit is in because you know they was vibing low as hell son you know they they, they genes is all effed up son like they genes you know now, now that i look back at it man yo man it wasn't even vibing right man they wasn't even vibing right like they i could look back at it right now and be like yeah now now i could identify the vibrations now i could identify the vibration that they was just straight banging off that spiritual energy son so it's like their genes is, is, is unable to reproduce itself. So it is just, it's telling you that right there that that version of that body is being discontinued. Because you're not gonna be able to move forward with a weak vibration. You're gonna have to get up out that body, man. You're gonna have to get a more advanced view. Just like you get more, just like back in the days you had the green screen StarTac flip phones. You know what I mean? Picture somebody came to you one day and said back in the 80s and be like, yo, son, you know, we like, like, like where we trying to be right now is like we trying to have, you know what I'm saying, the phones where you could just tap into any part of the planet in a nanosecond. Like you could just hit a button and it's like you could be there. You bring up the screen, you watch the images, you send the emails, you send full videos, you watch full videos, you make videos, you go online, you start doing all this stuff, you start explaining to these people, and, and they'll be looking at you like, what are you talking about? They'll be like, yo, but in order for you to, in order for you to occupy what I'm saying, you have to get rid of that StarTac phone. You have to get rid of that AT&T green screen phone, son. You gotta get rid of the gremlin screen. You gotta get rid of it. They, they gonna look at it like, man, what are you talking about, man? I just got this phone. This phone is hot. I just bought this phone last week. Now you telling me I need to get rid of it? They're like, yo, what I'm seeing right now will make that phone look so obsolete and they just turn and walk away. They're not ready to give up the old to get the advanced body. So when you're looking at these cell phones that we have now compared to the cell phones that was back in the days, it was a dramatic jump. Now apply that to the vehicles that you occupy right now. You got a bunch of people that can't even utilize telepathic communication. They can't utilize this on a full scale. It happens sometimes very lightly. You thinking about somebody, they call your phone. You thinking about somebody, they come around the corner. You say somebody's name, they ring your bell. You're like, yo, I was just thinking about you, son. Yeah, yeah, I. Right. 
Where's my money, man? You got my money you owe me? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? They just brush it off, son. That's because, that, that's because our bodies has undergone such a damn gauntlet. Our bodies went through a hell of a lot of gauntlet, man. They want to tell you all this stuff that happened in quote unquote slavery about us getting beat, hung, and all this stuff. You got to know that the hell we're looking at it on a physical, man. Look at this as on a genetic level, man. That was many different codes that was being forced into our genes, man. We have adopted so many freaking hybrid codes by way of these experiences that we have been having. That it somehow, in some cases, shut down certain abilities that we had that we could just use at will. Shutting down certain abilities. So it's like we had, and it's like the way how our bodies used to function back in those days, it don't function like how it, it don't function like that now. We had to go through various incarnations. Rejuvenate in the body. That's why they always want to keep you focusing on some slave gene because they know that's when they had the one up on you. They don't want you to focus on the future. They don't want you to focus on the etheric bodies. In order for you to get to the etheric bodies, you have to go through the physical bodies and your physical bodies have to be vibrating on a prominent level before you get there. On a prominent level. But yeah, so the human genome, they build it. That's cellular building, cellular, cellular bit mapping. Where they program cells and they build artificial helixes. What they call helixes, I stated before, you know the humans, they don't have a helix, they have a lunix. So look at human genome as a new genesis. Genesis 2018. <laughs> and beyond where they are tempted to make a new vehicle so that they can occupy different dimensions all these other uh quote unquote planets out here the moon so so now the moon could support life meaning support their purpose life is energy life is purpose how was the purpose being served or the energy being utilized? That will be determined by what type of vehicle that the energy is infused in. So there is life on the moon. You mean to tell me that there's no energy on the moon? That's what you're saying. Because life is energy. Life is purpose. You could only add, you could, purpose can only be defined if energy is at the driving wheel. If you ain't got no energy at the driving wheel, then it's not serving the purpose. For instance, if you got a car in the yard and it don't work, what purpose is the car gonna serve? There's no energy in the car. If you ain't got no battery in the car and the wires is all cut up and, 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 and it's inoperable, no energy flowing through the car, you're looking at the car like, man, this car ain't even got no damn purpose. I can't even use the purpose for the car now. I can't go to the grocery store, I can't ride around, I can't do whatever it is that I would be doing with the car is running. So it can't serve the purpose because the energy ain't there. But if the energy is in there, yeah, now nah, I could go over here, pick up the wifey and the kids. You know what I mean? I could drive to the airport, go to the supermarket, go handle my little miscellaneous things. Now the, now, now the, the car, the life, the energy is serving the purpose. So there is life on the moon. The energy is just different than Earth. So they got to map the bodies. That's the only reason why they going there. They ain't going there to put no foot, 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 footprint down on the damn um, sand or plant some damn flag or plant some cube, some Masonic board. That's what your damn American flag is. It's a Masonic cube, man. All these flags is Masonic cubes. I'm telling y'all that the Masons got this on smash. You go, you go in the city out here and go past the UN building. They tell you that all these nations fighting against each other, but they show you that that's a damn lie. When you drive past the goddamn UN building and you see all the flags of all the nations, all over the world, is right there. United Nations. <laughs> but they supposed to be beefing. There is no beef, man, it's an illusion. 
They working together to undermine the God race. Working together to undermine the God race. But the God race don't get it. They don't get it. They don't understand how important they are. They don't understand how important your ascension is. You think your ascension got to do with getting a raise on your job and getting a bigger house. Or finally getting the girl that you always wanted or the man you always wanted. That ain't no damn ascension. Ascension is you leaving this damn dimension. And the only way you can leave this dimension is by way of vibrating out this dimension. Hold on. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, man. Yo, man, just know that there's life on the moon on, and it's on all these planets, man. You know, that's that's one of the uh, purposes of an ozone layer. Or, or, or an atmosphere. You know, they call it an atmosphere. They give it a, the notion that it's actually circular. I already broke all that down. Check them all, guys. But yes, the moon has an atmosphere. It's the same way how when you look up in the sky at nighttime and you can't see the atmosphere or the quote unquote sky notice that they have different names for it for different conditions because it, 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 the names is basically describing energy behaving a certain way well notice when you look up in the sky at nighttime so called nighttime that you can't see the uh, sky. You know, but you can see the sky in the daytime. You know, those same rules apply to the moon and any other planet that's out here in this soulless system. The same way how the sun hit the earth on a specific angle, you see this, you see this, what they call a sky. That happens on the moon as well. It just happens differently because the energy is different. So when you look at the moon and you see people can't really see nothing on the moon. But then when you're looking at a full moon, you can see that expanding corona. That would be the atmosphere that's on the moon. And it looks different than the earth. It behaves different than the earth. So what they doing on the moon one of the main reasons they went to the moon wasn't to just go there to chill, to pick up some dust or some moon rocks. You know, because when they, when they got those rocks back, or the dust or whatever, and they was running experiments on that, they was looking to see how they can actually grow food. You know what I mean? They testing the soil samples. It's just like when a farmer buy some land and he want to grow some some food on the, on, the, on the land they take the soil into a lab and they test it and see what type of properties the soil has because now the plants has to be mapped around the soil as well so it's like a whole rebuilding um process that they doing son don't think that genesis just got to do with biology son genesis got to do with building Period, son. Plant life, animal life, aquatic life, aerial life. Why you think they making fake fish? Why you think they got fake? As I stated before, there's a lot of experiments that's happening here on the earth that people are solely indulge in that it, it defines their lifestyle. What do you think they making fake fish, fake food, fake birds? fake animals for us, huh? That's the test, man. Those are prototypes, man. Testing. You don't think they're in the labs making fake creatures with a atmospheric condition that the moon has? The same way how you're looking at these astronauts, how they create a simulation. Pay attention. They create a simulation where they make an artificial lunar environment that moon because you know this is the moon as well but 
we gonna speak the language. They making an artificial lunar environment where they got these astronauts training in a lunar or a moon gravitational environment. And that's all a closed door space. They got them spinning around in machines that mimic the gravitational pull of the moon. They got these simulated uh, arenas that has the same type of uh, energy settings or atmospheric or conditions that exist on the moon. They have it on Earth in the station area and they got the astronauts up in their train. What do you think they're doing that for, man? That's all gathering results so they could build a body here on Earth. As I stated before, the humans didn't start here on Earth. When you're looking at the humans, you're looking at a continued experiment. The same way how the humans right now is going to be making fake humans of themselves to exist on other planets. You know what I'm saying? Because the gods ain't doing it no more. The gods is not doing it no more, son. Once the gods stop governing your evolution, you on your freaking own. And that was the message that was clear to the humans. As I stated before, the, 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 the gods, they put the human in charge, but they, the humans, I ain't speaking about all of them, I'm talking about the elites. And the humans, they realized by, by them being in charge, they was on their own, and it meant that they would have to sacrifice their own, and it's inevitable that they die. That's why they gotta go hard, man, I don't understand. It is it's literally a life and death for the humans. So the gods ain't gonna be making no more new bodies for them. They're not doing it no more, son. Look what happened the last time we did that. You see what happened, right? You see, what's hap you see what happened the last time we created vessels for, for these freaking creatures? And these spirits jumped in this mother dutta. You see what happened? They took over the damn earth. We calling ourselves black. We on our hands and knees praying to rocks and stones. Rocks and uh, damn pieces of wood that has been molded into a statue that they program you to be in submission to. Jesus Christ, a crucifix. They in freaking buildings that's owned by the government. A corporation called church. Church is not the name of a building. It is the name of a corporation. That's why they saying we going to church for service today. We going for church service. We going to service today. What is service? Service has to do with when a provider is supplying a customer. That's what service is. You go to different suppliers to get service because you are the customer. So when you go in into a church, they are giving you a service or running a simulation in regards to how it would be or, or, or they mimicking how it would be to worship God. You're not worshiping God. They are giving you a simulated reality on what they see worshiping God as. So they provided a service for the soulfully sick because you are soulfully sick. You are operating under the illusion so in depth that you assume that you going into a church reading some scriptures that came out of a book. And by you doing that, you feel that you are connected to God. Hell no, you crazy. You don't even know how to connect to God, man. You think going to church gives you a connection with God? No, that puts you in submission to the beast. Because the beast is running church. Ain't no God running church. But yeah. So, the humans, they on their own, man. They gotta figure a lot of things out, man. That's why they going hard, man. So you know they gotta, they gotta build a new body so that their spirit could jump into when these vehicles uh, fade out of existence. You know, these old gen vehicles, these old gen biological bodies. They're going hard. So they create, they mimic a lot of um, environmental conditions that exist on the moon, you know, because they send probes over there and all that. 
you know, they, 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 they getting all these energetic samples, these vibrations, and then they come back, they, they send back those energetic settings, and then they, they make environments that represent those energetic settings, and then they send people in those environments to train it. And yes, people have died in those experiments, but you won't hear about it because in order for those people to even get into those arenas, they have to sign some type of waiver agreement that whatever happens here, we're going to deny it. You know, it's like when you look at these movies and you see these rogue agents. Yeah, you work for us, but if you get caught, we're going to deny all existence. We're going to deny that you even, we, we, we don't know who the hell you are. Who the hell is he talking about? They're going to deny your existence. Well, such and such died in some experiment because they was opening black holes. What are you talking about? We don't even know. We don't, we don't know that person. That person is not in our database. They, they give you a new identity. They showed you that in men in black. Like, you ain't going to be known as this person no more. You're going to be known as Agent uh, Smith, whatever his name was. Whatever Will Smith's name was. What was his name in that movie? I can't even think of it now. You go, you have a new identity. Here, put your fingerprints up on here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to give you a new identity, new social security number, new all that. Son. We're wiping all that out. You know what I mean? New identity, son. So if anything happened to you here, yo, we, there's no connection, son. No paper trail, nothing. They do that over there in Nassau, son. And you know, Nassau is a public, you know, that, that's like something that's, that has been publicized. It, the public knows about it, but you got to know they have an inverted version of NAS of Nassau that damn near nobody don't know about Where they really run some real experiments Nassau, they'll tell you yeah, we going to the moon and we doing this trying to build some new microchip and all this and all that But they have a, they have you, you better know that they have Something that make they have some type of uh damn corporation out there That'll make Nassau look look like you in a, a damn drive through movie theater just watching a the movie son that's how petty it will make NASA look. Talking about these people do highly advanced energetic experiments. Highly advanced. That's way beyond NASA. Because NASA is a covert operation, man. That's covert. In other words, it covers. When I say covert, I don't mean that it's in secret. I mean that it, 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 it is a cover for something else. So they got you focusing on NASA. Meanwhile, NASA is just a cover for something that's way deeper than what's actually being shown on the NASA screen. So they build a new bodies and all that. So in hopes to, you know what I'm saying, occupy the moon, occupy Mars, occupy Neptune, Uranus, because all of those planets have life. They are all made up of energy. And it's energy that's waiting to be infused in specific vehicles known as apparatuses, whether it be biological or metallic. They just have to figure out how to design the bodies around the energy terms and conditions. Just like how the gods did the human bodies, the plant life, the bird bodies, they map those bodies around earth terms and conditions. The human's gonna have to do the same with these other planets in this soulless system. So hell yeah, there's life on the moon, there's life on Mars, there's life on all these planets. You know what I mean? They just feeding the God race a lot. Telling them that they came from some Africa, you from Earth, you spiritual, you from the forest, get one with nature. Beat this drum, and dance around like a madman. That ain't what the gods is about. The gods is way beyond that. And the god race has lost their connection. They lost their connection. Lost it. They don't even know how to retrieve the connection. They so lost that they worship in matter. That's how you know that they disconnected from God, man from the real God, not these fake gods they got down here in the matrix. That's how you know they disconnected from God, that they worship matter. They worship what the beast create. How you connected to God and you worshiping what, what you created created? You in two levels of the damn darkness. You're not even worshiping the, what you created no more. You worshiping what, what you created created, which is all this merchandise. Dang.
Lost in the sauce, man. Lost. Lost in the sauce. So yeah, there's life on all these planets. All of them. <sighs> Don't listen to the beast when he's telling you that there's no life on the moon and there's no life in space. How much energy? The whole space is made up of energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just telling you that. And you gotta know the human species is collateral damage. When he's telling, when he's saying that there's no life in space, that's, that's not a message that's aimed at the human species. That's a message that's specifically aimed at the God races. I stated before, the same way how the gods send messages to this planet and it's specifically aimed at the gods, meaning that you might hear or other people might be able to see the message, but they won't be able to see the message. Let me give you an example. The gods is sending messages through sunlight. You have people that can see sunlight, but they can't see, meaning that they can see the visual illumination, but they can't see, meaning comprehend what the illumination is. So that's what I mean when you, when I say that the gods is sending specific messages by way of sunlight that's meant for the god race, but you would have other species that would see it, but they won't see it. So that's the same thing when the beast put messages out there saying, because he always follow the gods. That's the same thing that the beast does when he says on his TV screen globally that it ain't no life out there in space. Now he knows that there are people that's going to hear that message. Oh, let me let me rephrase that. There's people that's going to listen to that message, but then there are people who's going to hear that message. Big difference, man. Big difference. People are going to hear the message in regards to like, well, it ain't no life in space and they ain't really going to think about what was really being said. But then you're going to have people that's going to hear the message. There's no life in space and is going to understand that that is a freaking tactic to try to get the God race locked in earth. Meaning that I'm not going to be focusing none of my telepathic communicative powers outside of earth. I'm just going to fully focus my thoughts now in the matrix. Because since it ain't nothing out there, why the hell should I even put my thoughts out there? Why should I even think what's going on out there? Why should I even fathom a thought or allow any thoughts to go into my head that there's life in space if they just told me there's no life in space so well earth is what it is and I need to just focus all my atten you know my atten my attention on earth the matrix the illusion Babylon you know what I mean so that was a message that was aimed at the guard race and a lot of the members of the guard race fell for the damn bait as they always do. You know what I mean? As they always do. Straight up. There's life on all these freaking planets. Y'all better get used to it. Man, y'all better get ready. Straight up. Is, is no life on planets, but here you got the beast making all these satellites pointing at all these planets. Satellites that can actually send back a visual and audio feed. There's nothing there. What the freak you looking at? There's nothing happening there. What you sending back audio feeds for? What, is, what you want to listen for? If it ain't nothing there, why even utilize manpower and resources to build all these satellites and point it in a direction where nothing is happening? That's because they know there's something happening, son. And they watching it. They keeping it for them damn selves because they can't let the God race know what's really going on. It ain't got nothing to do with the humans. The hell with the humans. They, they only, the, 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 you gotta know that the deception only exists on this planet to deceive the God race. It ain't got nothing to do with the humans because the humans was engineered to serve the gods. It's in their genes. 
That's what they're here to simulate. They don't want the gods to know that there's life on other planets. Then you'll start thinking, like, hold on for a second, man. Life on other planets? How the hell did they how the how the hell did life get there? Did Jesus make life on other planets? You won't come into the realization that Jesus is a mundane God. Jesus is a earthbound God. Jesus only exists in the matrix. Jesus is a God that only exists in commerce. Commerce is a addition to the matrix. Because you got the uh, quote unquote authentic matrix, which would be earth. But then you got the subsidiary matrix, which would be commerce. Jesus only exists in commerce. You go, out, you go outside of commerce, there is no Jesus Christ. You go outside of commerce, there is no Allah. You go outside of commerce, there is no Buddha. There is no Yahweh, Yahweh, Baha, Shem, Yahweh, Shah. There is no Shiva. There is no Vishnu. Uh, 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 whatever the Hezel they names is. There is no Krishna. There is no Chalam Balam. All of those deities or gods and many more only exist in commerce. They only exist in commerce. You go outside of commerce, they don't exist. You know what I mean? That's why you could even go to certain parts of the planet right now where you still have people that live in the damn jungle and go up to them and be like, yo, man, yo, 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 Jesus, man, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They gonna look at you like, man, what are you talking about, man? What is this Jesus you talking about, man? What is this Jesus you talking about? It only exists in commerce. You go outside the illusion, outside of commerce, there is no Jesus Christ. And these people up here who's pushing these false gods, they only exist in commerce. They only exist in the matrix. We, the God race, need to realize that this is an illusion on a grand master scale. That's why it's hard for people to comprehend because it's intricate yet practical if you know what to look for. But this is a grand master illusion, son. This is an illusion done on a grand master scale, a grand master mason scale. That's why everywhere you go in commerce, you see masonry. Every freaking, there is not one place you go in commerce that you don't see masonry, son. You call those steps. That's what you call those, right? You call those stairs or steps. That's not stairs or steps, that's degrees. That's degrees of evolution. When they were showing you the monkey walking down, then he's slightly walking upright, then he's walking upright more, then he's going into the man. Look at the levels of their head. The levels of the head denotes the level of intelligence. Is a stairway that's, that was being built. When it was walking upright, that is step, staircase, step ladder, showing you masonry, son. Evolution. Look at the cars. You can see masonry encoded in all of it. Symbolism. It's all encoded, man. Grand Master Masonry. It's at the foundation of commerce. But the God race, the souls, they don't get it. They vibrate in too low. So low. They in darkness. They locked in the spirit world. Everything that the beasts say, they just comply. They don't scream a damn thing. 50 years from now, they're going to come out with a new God and everybody going to be all up on the wagon. 
like, yo, we found some ancient text. Jesus had a son. And they gonna map it to some to some uh, twin sun constellation. They gonna have the stories out there about the twin sun constellation. It's gonna be attributes and characteristics of a twin sun constellation. And they gonna put it all up in a story, and then people gonna buy it. I'm like, you know, Jesus had it somewhere. You know, the Vatican was hiding it. You know, the Vatican got a lot of secrets. They already preconditioned. The Vatican stay hiding stuff from us, man. I mean to tell me Jesus had a son and we was really supposed to be worshiping the son of Jesus? Then anybody gonna be walking around with mini me crosses, mini me crucifixes on. With a, with a baby wrapped in a damn blanket on the damn crucifix. There ain't gonna be no more Jesus on a cross. It's gonna be a baby bundled up in a crucifix, a small crucifix. Anybody gonna be worshiping the damn baby Jesus? A baby baby Jesus. Crazy, son. Crazy. But that's all going to be done by the Masons. The Masons going to use the trickery, man. They're going to use the knowledge because they know it's going to be easy for the humans to accept that. The humans is always waiting to be programmed, son. They're always waiting to be programmed to be governed, son. You ain't going to have to worry about the humans. Don't worry about the humans. They are awaiting programs. That's why they're here. They are here to be specifically programmed. Don't worry about the humans. Never mind, like the Moors used to say up in the courtrooms, I'm here to lift up fallen humanity. Never mind humanity. They waiting to be programmed by you. You just don't realize it. What you need to do is raise your vibration. Raise the vibration. Raise the freaking vibration. You have to raise your solar vibration. Raise it. It has to be risen. Rise from the dead. Rise out of that dead lunar frequency that you're in. You know what I mean? Rise up. You're going to start realizing what's going on. As I stated before, this is an amazing event uh, 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 in uh, dimension that we're in. This dimension right here, woo wee. If you just sit back and you just watch, yo, it's so many different signals, man. Go, go. If you, whatever city you in, Go into the biggest building that's in your city and just go on the top floor and just look. But sometimes you might need that aerial view. Just go on a high building, son. Wherever building you got in your city, wherever you at in the city, go up in there, go to the main floor and just look out the window, son. Look out the window and just take a look and just look at all the signals that you see moving. Because when you're looking at all these peoples, all these cars, all these animals, you're looking at different signals. And just look at the signals, man, and just decipher it. See how these people are just moving throughout the motherboard. See how they just moving, son. You can learn so much by just watching. If you just observe. You know what I mean? Just watch, man. Go watch some planes take off and land. <laughs> you know what I mean? Go watch some freaking planes take off and land. Cause that's energy you're looking at right there, son. You're looking and see how energy behave after it has been instructed to behave under certain conditions. That's what you're looking at, man. Look and see how energy behaves, man. Go to the ocean, look at the waters. What they call the waters, which is stored energy. Your ocean is stored solar energy. Your ocean stores etheric energy. It, it's stripped down, as I stated before, as the energy comes into the earth, it goes through the ozone layers or the ozone ripples. I told you that it's 13 different layers. 13, every time you go into a different dimension, what they, what they call a sky looks different. When you go, every time you, like, if you were to go like into the fourth dimension, it wouldn't be a blue sky. It wouldn't be a blue sky. You know what I'm saying? The, the color of the sky somewhat denotes the dimension that you're in. You wouldn't be seeing a blue sky. If you go to the fifth, you wouldn't be seeing a blue sky. It's different dimensions. So when you're looking at the ozone layers, because it's ozone ripples, because the energy is rippling out. 
the sunlight comes into the different ripples or the different layers and it's being filtered, it's being diluted, goes into the what they call the oceans. Because you got to know that the oceans is a organic dam. As I stated before, the beast ain't the first to do nothing, man. He copies. Where you think he got the freaking um, idea to build the dance? He didn't necessarily get that from the beaver. He watched the beaver, but he got that from the gods. When you're looking at the oceans, you're looking at an organic dam. Even though Earth is a hybrid, I'm just speaking a language so people can have an idea. When you're looking at the oceans, you're looking at a natural dam. Energy that is stored. Because water is energy. This is a spirit planet that we're on. And a, an electric planet. When you see that sunlight interacting with what they call the ocean's water, ocean water, you're looking at a natural or an organic type of cold fusion. You're looking at cold fusion. So the oceans is, an, is a natural dam because if you was to take all the waters out of the ocean, you would see a big ass hole. It'd be a big hole for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, man. A big hole. So when you're looking at a dam, like the, the, the beast build dams, what is it? What is it? It's a hole. You got to fill that dam up with water. And what's the water? Stored energy. It's stored spiritual energy. That's why when you see these spiritual people want to do their little rituals, what they do, they get some water, do some libations. Libations, man. But we not about the spiritual, man. We about the ethers, man. We gave the human spirituality because that's something that they need to exist. We program that into them. So the oceans is a natural dam. And the earth utilizes the energy from the salt water or crystal water. Because there's no such thing as salt. Salt is a crystal that comes from the sun. All these minerals or crystals come from the sun. You see, but the garbage don't understand how the gods mind work. What do you mean it comes from the sun? See, they can't fathom it, son. They lost in the matrix. You know what I mean? So just go to the oceans. Go, go to the beach and just stare. Look at, look at the damn waters. Communicate. Understand what type of dimension that you're in. Understand. Once you understand what type of dimension that you're in, that's when you're going to you, you're gonna be like Neo, son. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be like Neo. You're going to be like, wow, understand now. You're going to be like, yo. And you're going to sit back and be like, yo, this is an ill dimension, me. Like, you can learn so much just by sitting back and just watching, man. Because you got to know that the answers is right there in your face. Because, you know, the answers is in your face because the design is already complete. You don't need to figure out how to build the design. You don't need to figure out how to build a building. You don't need to figure out how to build the building. The answer is right there. It's already showing you that the building has already been built. You don't need to figure out what water is. It's telling you right there what it is. The water has already been built. You don't need to figure out what earth is or how old earth is. It's already here. The answers is already here. You don't need to figure out what a tree is, how a tree was built. It's already there. It's telling you what it is. Never mind what the beasts say it is. Go and see what it is. It's telling you right there what it is. But you forgot how to communicate with energy firsthand because you're vibrating so low. You know, your pineal gland vibrating so low, the antenna that analyzes everything. Since that has been suspended in vibration, you now believe. You believe everything that these people say. Your vortex screen gate is now neutralized. You have no more energy in your frontal lobe and just anything could get up in your frontal lobe. All these low frequencies could get up in there, which would normally get screened or get rejected. Wouldn't be able to penetrate through your force field, your mental force field. You ain't got no mental force field around your etheric head. 
You know what I mean? Your corona is low, vibra vibrating low. You don't have that robust energy vibrating outside of your head, which would stop low frequencies from coming in. You think all of that sounds crazy. But you on your hands and knees praying to stone doesn't sound crazy. You going into a church flipping through paper with words on it that was made by black ink or ink, whatever kind of ink that they put on the pages. You reading up out of that, you don't, and, and devoting your life to that, don't see that as crazy. You going to church praying to some sticks that they got from the forest. You're looking at a dead body when you're looking at a crucifix. The wood that they use that they make, the wood that they use to make those crucifix, that came from trees. Trees that was once living and they killed the trees. And now they turned the body of a tree into a crucifix and now you worship, you pray to the crucifix. You're praying to the dead. You don't even understand how the game is being played. You are praying to the dead. You're worshiping the dead. The wood is dead. You're praying to a dead body. That came from the forest. As I stated before, they use wood to do spells. They do it when they throw the wood in the, when they throw the wood in the fireplace. They do it with the wood with the Ouija board, holly wood. Do it with the magic wands. They use wood when they conducting spells. When these spiritual people want to do their little spells, their little weak rituals, their weak spells, what they do, they burn incense. Wood. They using the wood, the, the dead body, because it's a holocaust, because it's a sacrifice. When you're sacrificing, you're doing spells. The same way how they sacrifice babies, that's bodies. Same way how they sacrifice people. They use their body and they sacrifice the body and do spells. Well, you're doing it on a different dimension. When you uh, 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 kill uh, trees and stuff. Kill trees, throw it in the fireplace or do your little Ouija board rituals or your incense rituals. You're using the body of a dead to do a sacrifice. To, uh, uh, the body of the dead is a sacrifice and they're using it to conduct a spell. You, don't, you can't see how the game is being played because your, your multi-dimensional gland, you know, your pineal gland, your multi-dimensional gland has been locked in a earth frequency. You don't know how to take things apart in your head. The original laboratory, the organic laboratory is your mind. Where you could take the energy of any visual object, pull that image in your head and rip it apart and dissect it. From all angles, you analyze it and put it back together on any dimension. You can't even do that no more. You don't even have the energy to do that because your gland is vibrating so low. You know what I mean? But yeah, man, yo, this video is starting to get long. Hell yeah, there's life on all these planets. You know what I mean? It's, it's life on all these planets. And these planets ain't even really planets in regards to how they programmed you to see what a planet is. I'm just speaking the language. But realistically, all these celestial bodies in this quote unquote solar systems, they are all moons in this solar system. They all moons. They are all different representations of moons. This planet that we're on is a moon. All moons are electric. Real planets are ether, high fire, which is the sun. That's a real planet. This here is a freaking moon. Why you think it's so much water on it? That's an electric current. You're looking at a spirit. Electric energy stored that Earth uses. I remember these people used to talk about Earth has a soul. Earth ain't got no damn soul. Earth got a spirit. It has a spiritual core. How you think a majority on the life on the planet is spiritual? How in the hell is the Earth going to have a soul and the majority of the life on the planet is spiritual? They don't even understand what a soul is. They think a soul is just some damn soul. A soul represents a specific type of energy. You're not going to have a solar planet with spiritual beings living on it. The energy of the soul dramatically outdoes the spiritual output.
You have to create an environment that meets the energy requirements. This is a spiritual planet that we're on. It was made for spiritual beings. The real ether planet or the real soul planet is the sun. That's where we, why you think we like the sun? The sun is out, we like, oh, we don't like, we don't like earth. Earth is all about darkness and being cold. As I stated before, if the sun was never here in this damn dimension, it would be in darkness and it would be cold. We ain't from earth. Earth original climate settings is darkness and cold. Low energy. We ain't about that. When it's sun outside and it's uh, summertime, wherever you at, in a nice so-called tropical area, you all out in the sun like, yeah, woo wee. Sun is outside, boy. Let me go outside, get my thug diesel on. You going out there, you enjoying the sun. The ladies out there like, yeah, I'm going to go get my hair. They go chill with the females. We're going to go out here. We're going to do this. Ooh, that sun is so beautiful. That's where you from. That's where the freak you from. It's telling you, yo, that's where you from. You ain't from Earth. You don't like when it's summertime on Earth. You like summertime all the time. Because that's how it is on the sun. It's never winter time on the sun. All the damn time is summertime. And you notice when it's summertime how you got so much energy. You damn near got to force yourself sometimes to go to sleep in the summertime. Now imagine that being magnified a billion, quazillion, trillion light times. You would never go to sleep. You never get tired. Why? Because there's so much high energy on there. That you constantly being restored with energy. You got to know that when you go to sleep, that's recharging. You have to recharge because you're not receiving that much energy. In other words, you are using more energy than you are receiving. So therefore, you have to have a certain standby mode where you have to go and go to sleep. Go down and go to sleep. Because you got to recharge. But with the sun, you could never use more energy than the sun is giving you. Son. The sun gives you more energy than you're using. So you would never get tired. It would never enter your soul to go to sleep. You never go to sleep. Never. People can't even understand that because you got to know that sleep is associated with time. And since we are beings that's not of time, there's no reason for us to go to sleep. The God race don't even understand this. They so lost in time, they do everything in time frames. You know what I mean? Earth original settings is spiritual. This ain't our freaking planet, man. This ain't home for the God race. Souls live on the sun. And that's way beyond these agents for the beast mind could fathom. You know what I mean? Because when you see these people out here pushing these doctrines, son. As I stated before, when you look at a, they be talking about they got these scholars in the conscious community. You got to know that scholar is a word that's short for scholarship. And you gotta know that when you get a scholarship, you are being sponsored by an agency. I spoke about this before. So when you see these, these, these scholars in the, in, in, the, in the conscious community and they come in with their so-called teachings like they Moorish doctrine and they uh, Egyptology and they Scientology and they Gaytology, whatever tology these people be talking about, son. When you see them coming with their all tologies and they telling you that they are a scholar, that means that they are being sponsored by an agency that four hands, whatever they teach it. In other words, if they speaking about Egyptology, they being sponsored or uh, uh, they got a scholarship, you know, under the radar scholarship, and they being sponsored by a corporation, AKA agency, that is funding Egyptology. So they represent an agency. It's not scholar like how you think scholar is, because that's one thing that they don't clear up. Since I stated before, they use these words that has multiple meanings, but they never tell you what it really is. Because if they did, it would blow their cover. They all agents for the beast. So when they're telling you that they scholars in the freaking uh, conscious uh, community, that means that they got a scholarship. It doesn't mean that they have great academics in a specific subject. It means that they have a scholarship from a particular agency that's ran by the beast, and the beast is funding them to teach this doctrine to get the guard race locked in. Locked in. You know what I'm saying? Locked in. So they all agents for the beast. So a scholar is short for scholarship. 
Like when you look at these athletes get a scholarship, well, I got a full scholarship to go to Yale, or I got a full scholarship to go to Harvard, or I got a full scholarship to go over here, such and such university. There, yeah, somebody is funding you. Why? Because you are an investment. Because you have the potential to perpetuate their business. So they're going to sponsor you. So the people in the conscious community, they have what it takes to perpetuate their business. So now they are being funded by the beast. They all agents for the beast, man. Telling you that you're from earth or you came from some damn dirt or you used to swing in some trees, beat drums and throw spears all day. Living in some trees like a bunch of damn bugs and insects. You know, God's living in a freaking tree. We existed before the tree. So where the hell was we living before the tree was created? We existed before Earth. So where the hell was we before Earth was created? Before Earth was projected into this part of the solar system, in, into this part of, uh, into this sector of space. Huh? On the sun, a real planet. That was never created. The sun isn't about time. The sun dictates time. The different streams or projections of light comes in at different time frames or different dimensions. As I stated before in past videos, Look at time as degrees, which is vibrations, which is dimensions. You're looking at time, you're looking at different dimensions, and it all has to do with grafted energy. Look at time as grafted energy, energy that has been grafted to vibrate a specific vibration for a specific time frame. All dimensions, all you see these dimensions out here, they were all created. So therefore, they all have individual time. That's why you see on this planet Earth, they have so many different time zones. Because not all of those territories was created simultaneously. They all came into existence at different time frames. So therefore, they're gonna have different clocks. Right now it's 11.20 a.m. On this part of the planet, on the other side, it could be eight o'clock in the freaking morning. Somewhere on the other part of the globe, it could be 12 midnight, it could be 4 o'clock in the morning. Because they all coming in at different time frames, all coming in at different degrees. Dimensions vibrating on specific vibrations. Time zones. An illusion. The sun isn't about time, the sun dictate time. It project time out. But it doesn't subscribe to time because it is the master time. They talk about Saturn is the planet of time. Ain't no freaking Saturn no planet of time, man. You crazy? The hell with Saturn. The sun, the gods is all about the ones who dictate what time is. Not no planet Saturn, not no fake god called Kronos. The sun, the sun will wipe Saturn out in no time. I bet you Saturn won't see that time coming. You know what I mean? The hell with Saturn. The hell with all these fake planets in this solar system, man. It's all about us. That's the type of vibration you need to have. It's all about us. Never mind what the hell you saying. It's all about us, the souls. You fake. You ain't even real. Go over there and simulate something else. You know what I mean? We vibing over here. Coming over here trying to distort the vibration. But yeah. But yo, man, about to get up out of here, man. Yo, just know that hell yeah, there's life on all these planets. You know what I mean? And the Human Genome Project is Genesis Evolved. And, you know, the ocean waters, that's an organic dance. They mimicking off of uh, the gods. You know, these fake dance with your spiritual energy. Look at it as a whole bunch of electricity just stored in a damn battery, son. You know what I mean? Don't see the water. As I stated before, when you see the waves going through the water, that's energy. Just imagine the same, the same waves that you feel when the wind blow. That's not wind that's blowing. That's, that's waves that you can't see. Waves of energy that just colliding with you. That's what you're feeling, energy. The same waves that's in the water. Now you're seeing what the waves look like when the wind hits you. Since you can't see the wind, when you look at the water, that's what the wind look like because that's what the energy is. It travels in waves, it travels in vibrations. So next time you look at the water, know that you're looking at energy. Wavy, baby.
stored in the earth and the earth is converting that aquatic energy into an electrical source is being converted how by way of the crystals that's in earth all of the crystals your dirt is crystals all these crystals that they got in earth go in, go on google and google images in earth crystal images in earth and you will see it's like mountains even your damn mountains is crystals look at the wave pattern that the mountains have they have the wave pattern just like the wave pattern in the water energy man showing you man but google the images and you see these big crystals they harness in the energy from the water same type of crystals that you got in your body that harness the energy when you drink water that's why you got to keep your body hydrated you keep your body hydrated not to just keep it hydrated you keep it hydrated because your body converts the water into energy keeps the glands operating proficiently son you know what I mean when you are becoming dehydrated that's you coming on the stages of calcification and your body can't function as fluid as it normally would facts so just know that the earth is converting the uh the energy you know what i'm saying because the water is also being used as a filter as well for sunlight because if it didn't have that water on this planet woo -wee, man it, it yo if it didn't have that water on this planet <laughs> this planet would be like a magnifying glass with them damn crystals because that's what a magnifying glass is. that's what glass is period a crystal it'll be like a concentrated beam of energy coming from that sun hitting that crystal and this planet would be too highly charged for spirits to be on it son so that water serves as a coolant you know what i'm saying it's like a liquid crystal that cools the energy it strips or dilutes the energy dramatically down because now the water or the energy the sunlight is going through the liquid crystal just imagine that the water is like a liquid magnifying glass and the, the sun is going through it and as the energy is going through the sunlight is going through the water it's being cooled you know the waves doesn't come from earth spinning as i stated before because if earth was spinning and the waves came from earth spinning then the the water would look like a whirlpool it would look like how your water look when the water is going down the drain in your kitchen sink or your toilet bowl your bathroom sink it would be spinning it wouldn't be wavy it's wavy like that because the sun waves the sunlight travels in waves not sun rays sun waves you have sun waves that comes in wavy so it interacts with the water and now you're seeing how the sun behaves. The sunlight behaves is wavy. And you also have a vibration that's coming, fluctuating out. That's why I say it's ozone ripples. Because the energy ripples out. Magnetism ripples out. It appears that the ozone layer is round, but the energy bonds to the magnetic ripple, the pulse, and it appears that is round just like when a rainbow comes into this atmosphere the magnetism bends the light it makes it look like a rainbow it makes it look like an arch but hold up for a second light is supposed to be shapeless and formless so if it's taking a shape and a form then that would means it's undergoing a form of manipulation so therefore there is no such thing realistically as a rainbow you're looking at a manipulation you're looking at magnetism Bending and holding the light, the sun rays. See, you just gotta think, man. The hell with what these scientists be telling you, man. They be always lying. And I know why they lie, because they don't want the God race to raise up, son. Once we raise up, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, so they got to lie. So the sun waves hitting the water, throwing the waves. You're looking at a communication, an interaction, a, 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 a conversation, son. The light communicating with the matter and also the vibration that's coming out of earth deep in earth core they tell you that is a bunch of magma a bunch of lava to give the notion that is um 
To give the notion that it somewhat has a soul, huh, nah, center. It has an electrical core, and yes, it could produce a hell of a lot of heat. The same way how your electricity, when you got your heaters in your house, you got a bunch of heaters in your house that's ran by electricity. It doesn't mean that electricity can't produce heat. Yes, it can. You know, of course it can. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, um, the more amount of electricity that you could have stored stably, the way more heat you could um, produce. So when you're looking at the lava, what they call lava or magma that's in the earth core, you're looking at the minerals becoming liquefied. In other words, you are seeing the metamorphosis happens. In other words, when you're looking at the, the, uh, the water or the air and it gets more dense, 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 and it start getting cold and it gets more dense, more dense, more dense, and it start turning into ice, that's what you're seeing on a in somewhat inverted level when you're looking at the magma. You're seeing the energy of the sun that's coming in dense, coming in, it's getting more dense, more dense, more dense, more dense, more dense. More dense. And then it come, goes deep into the earth and is getting channeled by all of the crystals that's in the earth. And now it comes up as lava. Because that's how the minerals come into quote unquote manifestation. By way of the lava. Because that's what lava is. Minerals. When it gets hard, they tell you that it's rock. But there's no such thing as a rock. What you're really looking at is minerals. And that all comes by way of the sunlight that's going through different mediums that's stationed in Earth. Taking the high etheric energy coming in on a photonic light wave band. As I stated before, if you was to magnify the particles that make up the sunlight, you would see hieroglyphs. That's the real language that the gods speak. They don't speak no freaking English. They speak hieroglyphs. Big difference between holographs or, or, or should I say holograms holograms or holograph the humans use holographs holograms you know what I'm saying imageries on TVs to communicate with you but the gods use hieroglyphs to communicate with us the exclusive language man that we supposed to be communicating with so you're looking at the high energy coming into the planet going through a series of conversions and coming in out as what they call lava when you're looking at these uh volcanoes that's why i say you man just look at earth man never mind what the beast tells you man go look at earth look at earth man if you can go look at some volcanoes go look at them when they explode go look at them when them turbines kick off now that's a factory that you're looking at that will be a natural factory that produce minerals like you got these fake factories out here that make fake minerals they call them vitamins you know what i mean these fake laboratories that make fake minerals vitamins you have the authentic one man the gods created it a volcano what they call a volcano with vault which is associated with vulva the woman's vagina but that's not really what that's called that's just what the humans want to call it because they always giving it a, a name so they can have some type of uh, understanding but it's way beyond that you know what i mean so when you're looking at the lava you're looking at a way of how minerals are generated into this dimension and that all happens by way of sunlight but the the, the, the guard race they lost it they lost it but yo man this video is starting to get extra long yo i'm up out of here man hell yeah there's life on other planets raise your vibe I'm out.